cross to where the princess slept. He cut off the tail and returned as he had come. He then started for home, carrying the tail very carefully. When day Ame and the Princess Elephant In the heart of a vast kingdom nestled a humble village where life flowed like the gentle currents of a peaceful river. In this village there resided a woman, once vibrant and full of life, who had borne three sons. These sons, bound by loving devotion, sought to repay their mother's love as she aged gracefully. Little did they know that their endeavors would set forth a chain of events that would test their courage, wit, and the very fabric of their existence. As the years wove their intricate tapestry, the mother grew frail and weary, her once lively spirit now tethered to the mortal coil. Sensing her twilight approaching, her sons pondered ways to honor her memory and grant her solace in her final journey. The eldest son vowed to craft a sepulcher of exquisite stone, a monument befitting her grace and wisdom. The second son pledged to fashion a coffin of unmatched beauty, wherein she would rest in eternal peace. However, it was the youngest son who made the most audacious promise of all, to obtain the tail of the fabled Princess Elephant and place it alongside their mother in her final resting place. This promise was by far the hardest one to keep. The youngest son, whose name was now Kwame, embarked on his quest with naught but determination and a glimmer of hope lighting his path. Soon after this, their mother died. The youngest son immediately set out on his search, not knowing in the least where he would be likely to find the tale. He travelled for three weeks, and at the end of that time he came to a little village. There he met an old woman, who seemed very much surprised to see him. She said no human creature had ever been there before. The boy told the tale of his search for the princess elephant tail. The old woman replied that this village was the home of all the elephants, and the princess slept there every night but she warned him that if the animals saw him, they would kill him. The young man begged her to hide him, which she did in a great pile of wood. She also told him that when the elephants were all asleep, he must get up and go to the eastern corner. There he would find the princess. He must walk boldly over, cut off the tail and return in the same manner. If he were to walk stealthily, the elephants would waken and seize him. The animals returned as it was growing dark. They said at once that they smelt a human being. The old woman assured them that they were mistaken. Their supper was ready, so they ate it and went to bed. In the middle of the night, the young man got up and walked boldly across to where the princess slept. He cut off the tail and returned as he had come. He then started for home, carrying the tail very carefully. When daylight came, the elephants awoke. One said he had dreamed that the princess's tail was stolen. The others beat him for thinking such a thing. A second said he also had had the dream, and he also was beaten. The wisest of the elephants then suggested that they might do well to go and see if the dream were true. This they did. They found the princess fast asleep and quite ignorant of the loss of her tail. They wakened her, and all started off in chase of the young man. They travelled so quickly that in a few hours they came in sight of him. He was afraid when he saw them coming and cried out to his favourite idol, which he always carried in his hair. Oh my Juju Depo, what shall I do? The Juju advised him to throw the branch of a tree over his shoulder. This he did, and it immediately grew up into a huge tree, which blocked the path of the elephants. They stopped and began to eat up the tree, which took them some little time. Then they continued their way again. Again the young man cried, Oh my Juju Depo, what shall I do? Throw that corn cob behind you, answered the Juju. The lad did so and the corn cob immediately grew into a large field of maize. The elephants ate their way through the maize, but when they arrived at the other side, they found that the boy had reached home, so they had to give up the chase and return to their village. The princess, however, refused to do so, saying, I will return when I have punished this impudent fellow. She thereupon changed herself into a very beautiful maiden, and taking a calabash symbol in her hand, approached the village. All the people came out to admire this lovely girl. She had it proclaimed through the village that whoever succeeded in shooting an arrow at the symbol should have her for a bride. The young men all tried and failed. An old man standing by said, If only Kwame, the cutter of the princess elephant's tail, were here, he could hit the symbol.
Then Kwame is the man I will marry, replied the maiden, whether he hit the symbol or not. Kwame was quickly fetched from the field where he was plowing and told of his good luck. He, however, was not at all delighted to hear of it, as he suspected the maiden of some trick. However, he came and shot an arrow which struck the center of the symbol. The damsel and he were accordingly married. She was all the time preparing to punish him. The night following their marriage she turned into an elephant while Kwame was asleep. She then prepared to kill him, but Kwame awoke in time. He called, Oh my Juju Depo, save me. The Juju turned him into a grass mat lying on the bed, and the princess could not find him. She was most annoyed, and next morning asked him where he had been all night. While you were an elephant, I was the mat you lay on, replied Kwame. The damsel took all the mats from the bed and burned them. Next night, the princess again became an elephant and prepared to kill her husband. This time, the Juju changed him into a needle and his wife could not find him. She again asked him in the morning where he had been. Hearing that the Juju had helped him again, she determined to get hold of the idol and destroy it. Next day, Kwame was going again to his farm to plow a field. He told his wife to bring him some food to the resting place. This time she had fairly made up her mind that he should not escape. When he had had his food, she said, Now lay your head in my lap and sleep. Kwame quite forgot that his Juju was hidden in his hair and did as she bid. As soon as he was asleep, she took the Juju out of his hair and threw it into a great fire which she had prepared. Kwame awoke to find her an elephant once more. In great fear, he cried out, Oh, my Juju Depo, what am I to do? All the answer he got, however, came from the flames. I am burning, I am burning, I am burning, Kwame called again for help, and the Juju replied, Lift up your arms as if you were flying. He did so and turned into a hawk. The village of Kwame bustled with life as the sun rose over the horizon, casting golden hues upon the thatched roofs and winding paths. Yet, beneath the facade of tranquility, a tension lingered in the air, a palpable sense of unease that whispered of looming threats and unseen dangers. Kwame, hailed as the victor of the princess's challenge, found himself thrust into the spotlight, his triumph overshadowed by the shadow of the princess's wrath. Though outwardly celebrated, he knew that his newfound happiness was but a fragile facade, threatened by the specter of vengeance that lurked just beyond the village gates. As whispers of the princess's true identity spread like wildfire through the village, Kwame sought solace in the familiar embrace of his family and the reassuring presence of the Juju Depo. Yet even amidst the warmth of his loved ones, he could not shake the sense of foreboding that gnawed at his soul. Days turned to weeks, and still, the threat of the princess loomed large, casting a dark shadow over Kwame's newfound happiness. With each passing moment, he remained vigilant, his senses attuned to the slightest hint of danger, for he knew that his ordeal was far from over. Meanwhile, in the depths of her palace, the princess seethed with rage, her heart consumed by the flames of vengeance. For her, the humiliation of defeat was a wound that festered deep within her soul, driving her to seek retribution at any cost. Gathering her most trusted advisors, she devised a plan to ensnare Kwame in a web of deceit, to strip him of his newfound happiness and deliver him into the clutches of despair. With each passing day, her resolve hardened, her determination unwavering in the face of adversity. One fateful night, as the moon cast its silvery glow upon the village, the princess set her plan into motion. Cloaked in darkness, she slipped into Kwame's home, her footsteps silent as a whisper as she crept toward his slumbering form. With a swift and practiced hand, she wove a spell of enchantment, binding Kwame's dreams in chains of illusion and deceit. As he slept, visions danced before his eyes, twisting and contorting into nightmarish shapes that taunted him with their cruel mockery. Yet even in the depths of his subconscious, Kwame sensed the presence of danger, a primal instinct that stirred him from his troubled slumber. With a start, he awoke his heart pounding with the echo of fading dreams and the lingering scent of betrayal. Rising from his bed, Kwame cast a wary gaze around his chamber, his senses alert to the slightest hint of intrusion. Yet to his relief, he found no sign of the princess or her treacherous machinations, leaving him to wonder if it had all been but a trick of the mind. Determined to uncover the truth, Kwame sought counsel from the Juju Depo, whose wisdom had guided him through countless trials and tribulations. 
With solemn reverence, he invoked the spirit of the juju, his words echoing through the stillness of the night like a prayer upon the wind. And lo, the juju answered, its voice a soothing whisper that calmed the storm raging within Kwame's soul. With words of comfort and reassurance, it bade him to remain vigilant, to trust in the power of his own resilience and the bonds of friendship that bound him to those he loved. With renewed determination, Kwame set forth to confront the princess and unravel the tangled web of deceit that threatened to consume him. Gathering his courage, he ventured into the heart of the village, his steps guided by the faint flicker of hope that burned within him. As he traversed the winding streets and bustling markets, Kwame sensed the weight of the princess's gaze upon him, her presence a looming specter that haunted his every move. Yet he refused to be swayed by fear or doubt, for he knew that his destiny lay not in the hands of fate, but in the strength of his own convictions. At last he reached the palace gates, their towering spires casting long shadows upon the cobblestone path. With a steady hand, he pushed them open, his heart pounding with anticipation as he stepped into the hallowed halls beyond. Within the palace walls, the princess awaited, her eyes ablaze with a fierce determination that mirrored Kwame's own. With each passing moment, the tension between them grew, a silent battle of wills that threatened to erupt into open conflict. Yet as Kwame stood before her, he sensed a flicker of doubt in the princess's gaze, a glimmer of uncertainty that belied her outward bravado. Seizing upon this opportunity, he sought to appeal to her humanity, to remind her of the bonds that united them as fellow beings upon this mortal coil. With words of empathy and understanding, Kwame spoke of forgiveness and redemption, urging the princess to cast aside the shackles of hatred and embrace the light of compassion that dwelled within her heart. And to his surprise, he saw a spark of recognition in her eyes, a fleeting glimpse of the innocence that had been buried beneath layers of anger and resentment. Moved by his words, the princess hesitated, her resolve waning in the face of Kwame's unwavering compassion. For in him, she saw not an enemy to be vanquished, but a kindred spirit whose strength of character had touched her in ways she had never thought possible. And so, in a moment of clarity, the princess made a decision that would alter the course of their destinies forever. With a solemn vow, she pledged to abandon her quest for vengeance and seek instead a path of peace and reconciliation. As the first light of dawn broke over the horizon, Kwame and the princess stood together, united in their resolve to forge a new future free from the burdens of the past. And though their journey had been fraught with peril and uncertainty, they knew that as long as they remained steadfast in their convictions, no obstacle could stand in their way. With the blessings of the Juju Dipur and the unwavering support of their loved ones, Kwame and the princess set forth to rebuild their shattered world, their hearts filled with hope and the promise of a brighter tomorrow. In the days that followed, Kwame and the princess worked tirelessly to mend the rifts that had torn their world asunder. With each passing day, their bond grew stronger, forged in the crucible of adversity and tempered by the fires of redemption. Together, they embarked upon a journey of reconciliation, reaching out to those they had wronged and seeking forgiveness with open hearts and minds. And as they journeyed through the villages and towns, they witnessed the transformative power of forgiveness as old wounds healed and new friendships blossomed in their wake. In time, the scars of the past began to fade, replaced by the promise of a future filled with hope and possibility. And though challenges still lay ahead, Kwame and the princess faced them with courage and determination, secure in the knowledge that as long as they stood united, nothing could break their resolve. As the years passed, their tale became legend, passed down from generation to generation as a testament to the enduring power of love and forgiveness. And though their names may fade from memory, their legacy would live on, a beacon of light in a world often shrouded in darkness. In the end, Kwame's journey taught us that even in the darkest of times, there is always hope, that no matter how insurmountable the odds may seem, love, compassion and forgiveness have the power to overcome even the greatest of obstacles. And so, let us remember the lessons of Kwame's tale, to cherish the bonds of friendship, to embrace the power of forgiveness, and to never lose sight of the light that shines within us all. For in the end, 
It is not the challenges we face that define us, but the choices we make in the face of adversity that shape our destinies and leave a lasting legacy for generations to come. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel for more interesting and captivating folktale stories. See you in the next story.